Hello. So this is Power Outage, and this is going to be episode two, uh, basically giving you guidance on how to play Power Outage. In today's episode, we're going to cover uh, creating a character. Uh, so with Power Outage, it's a little bit different than your standard RPG, because normally you would just hand off the book to the person and then they would just create the character as they go. Um, when you're working with kids, however, uh, you typically will be helping them along in creating their character. Um, that's not to say that kids will always require a GM to kind of guide them through it. As soon as they figure it out once, it becomes easy for them to build from there on out. In fact, it might be pretty easy for them to build just right off the bat. But for the sake of guidance, I'll go through it. Now, there is a mechanical way of building your character, and it's very easy. It takes maybe two to three minutes. Um, but from a standpoint of creating a character for a kid, you're going to want to start off with a concept of what they're making. You know, So uh, in Power Outage, you are creating a superhero. So when you're building a superhero, the first thing you want to do is you want to start figuring out exactly what superhero they want to be. Um, before you start looking at any statistics, any powers, any characteristics or attributes and things like that, you want to ask the children that are going to be playing what character, you know, what are what are the basic uh, building blocks of this superhero? I start and so you start asking them questions that help them guide uh, that help guide the character that they want to create. Uh, if they have no idea whatsoever, you could start off by asking questions that kind of will help them form the picture of the hero in their minds. Like, what are your hero's favorite colors? You know, colors kind of attach attributes and characteristics to a character. So, you know, what, what colors do your character use? You could also ask what powers do your, your, uh, your, does your hero have or your heroine have? Um, you can ask what's the name of your superhero? Oftentimes when they start off with a name, the, the character takes shape around that. So um, once they have a general idea of the character that they want to create, they could start considering what kind of powers this hero has. And you ask them to typically come up with uh, three to five powers that these, this uh, hero will have. Once they've generated the powers, or once they've created the powers, like say it's, you know, they have the power of flight, or the power to talk to animals, or the power to freeze things, um, you could take those powers and you can work with the kid to apply the powers um, to a power table that we have in the book. So um, the, the, uh, the core rule book provides you guidance on brainstorming a uh, character with your, with your, uh, with your children. Uh, it also asks um, for weaknesses. So you could ask for what weaknesses your power might have, and that helps add a little bit of role-playing flavor to how you create the character. Um, so then you go to the book. Uh, the book, starting on, oh, right now it's starting on page 44. We'll see what happens once the design and editing kicks in. But the powers are basically split into tables and they're labeled a very kind of boring a b c d all the way down uh, and they're broken up into combat powers utility powers and uh, support powers now why are they labeled a b c d a lot of people see that and are kind of turned on you know might be turned off at first blush the reason is because they are kept as generic as possible so that when the kids, so that when you're working with the kids to create the powers, you're taking these effects and you're applying the power that the kid decided to the effect. So in 
basically if I am doing, for instance, 1d4 damage to an adjacent enemy and I'm pushing them back, that is the effect that is built into the table. I take the effect and I apply the kid's power to the effect. So whether I am doing 1d4 damage with a lightning bolt like a taser or am I um, doing it with an ice blast or I'm doing it with a sonic boom or a uh, psychic you know pushback whatever the case may be um, I, I'm creating the effect as the character uh, and the uh, the effect uh, sorry I'm creating the cause and the table provides the effect in that way kids can create characters based off of what they want and use powers um, that attach so there's like a uh, the powers create a kind of a substance that allows you to play a game but it allows you complete control over creating the type of character you want in that regard there's no such thing as races or or classes in the game you could basically create any character you want so if I want to create a robot if I want to create a ghost or uh, a, uh, a plant or a uh, I believe at one point somebody controlled all their powers through a small Pomeranian which was really cool um, so be it um, because again there is complete creative control over how the effect is created but it always leads back to an effect in the table. Now that's not to say that you can't create your own character, your own powers. See, power outage works more along the lines of guidance. So these are um, options that you can select, but you're not limited to them. If you are sitting in your table and you decide that you want a new power, you're free to create a power. Um, you can also combine powers from this table to create a power. Um, if you decide that you're creating a power that isn't on the table and you want to share that power with the uh, with the you know the community, the power outage community, you could actually submit it on the webpage, poweroutagegame.com, and it might become a canon power. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah there are you know, I've color-coded them to a degree, so combat powers are red, um, utility powers, I believe, are green, uh, and there they are, and support powers are blue, and when you're creating these, um, when you're setting up these powers for the kids, you could actually put the powers on different cards, so that way, uh, and, and if you, like, create a card, with a power on it and you attach a image or symbol to that then depending on what the kid is playing with they can choose the power without necessarily having to focus on what the effect of the power is because again when you're dealing with younger kids especially um, they just want to do something cool you know what I mean they don't care exactly necessarily that I am doing 2d4 damage to this enemy they just know that they want to freeze the enemy or they want to you know blast him with sun rays or something along those lines so um yeah so these that's power that's powers in a nutshell um so once you've kind of gone through the process of connecting the powers that they've created to the powers that they want then you look at the attributes now the attributes are, sorry for this fast scrolling there, Let's scroll through here. Now of course this is, you're getting a preview of how the uh, uh, book looks as it stands. Of course the Kickstarter, the intent of the Kickstarter is to change the design, but it's serviceable as is. So you start off with basic stats. You have uh, two impact, two power, two omer, and um, for yield points, you have 10 plus D6, uh, a D6. A D6 is the cubicle dice. Um, I've got a little picture right there, actually, for you. Oop, I should scroll down so that could be physical, visible. 
Um, so now, if you are unfamiliar with what these stats, what the attributes mean, I have the first video that shows you exactly what the attributes are. So at level one, I get three uh, points that I can assign to either Impact, Power, or Omer. So I can assign those points however I see fit. I can say, you know, I have two Impact and one Omer, so I've got, uh, you know, stats of four, two, and three. Or I can add everything to Power if I wanted to, so it's two, five, and two. Uh, I could spread these out evenly across, so I have three, three, and three. Um, the choices are really up to uh, you. However, um, from a thematic standpoint, um, you might want to, like if I am creating a close-in fighter, then I might have, I might focus on impact and over. If I am uh, creating a power that is, if I'm creating a character that is more ranged and taken back or something like that, or if I'm creating a, uh, yeah, if I'm creating a, uh, I might do two, you know, impact and, and multiple powers. If I'm creating a character that is uh, kind of like a talker or, you know, like uses his social aspects, then I might be trying to put more into impact. Um, so there, because there are no classes necessarily, you are basically um, kind of um, holistically creating a character that is the uh, that falls into those standard archetypes that you are familiar with the healer the 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 bard or of what what have you um you know the fighter you know kids are deciding what characters they are without actually assigning a role to them they're just creating their their heroes um so you add your attributes to your you know you add your base attributes and then you roll a d6 dice and you add that to 10 and then you have your total yp um, you figure out your travel by adding a d4 uh, plus 4 so you roll a d4 you add that to 4 and then that's your standard um, your your travel speed uh, and that is a big part of uh that's that's just about it that's creating your character right then and there um so again just to recap at level one you add your three attribute points you roll a d6 and add that to get your initial yield points um now if you're playing a character uh in a long-standing campaign because you're playing you know with kids then uh you're, you're, you start off um, with two powers. Uh, and then by, by level three, you're gaining four powers. By level uh, six, you're gaining, or by level five, you're gaining six powers. Uh, you max out at six total powers. Now, that is, again, that, that falls under the category of guidance. If your kids are really, really interested in playing all the powers you can allow them access to more powers early on um, i just created that uh, as a max initially so that there's like a small level of entry when they're starting off you know so that they get familiar with the use of powers so that they know which powers they're selecting so that they're not selecting too many of course if you have a more advanced group you can have more options for them. Um, the other thing is if you're doing a one shot or a demo of uh, power outage uh, for a group of kids, then um, you can give them more powers at the start, especially since they're only going to be playing in a small type of campaign. Leveling up occurs pretty quickly at the start, at the onset um, in power outage. Um, in fact, um, there is a rule called the first session first level rule where basically the first time a kid sits down and plays um that is their level one at the end of level you know at the end of that session they have now leveled up to level two um it's kind of like gives kids momentum you know it builds into the momentum of playing uh and from there on they're ecstatic you know like they're 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 ready to move on and it helps them 
move into level three at a much faster rate. Um, so they automatically get the not only level one, but the uh, the base experience points that would be required for level one, which means they would get 20 experience points their first session right off the bat, right out of the gates. So once they're finished with that first session, they get their 20 experience points and they get to move on. Um, there are um, pre-generated characters that you can play with. Um, that There are 10 in the first generation of heroes. Uh, those characters are characters like uh, Pocket Protector, uh, Suburbanite, uh, uh, oof, I've just lost them, um, Rock Control, uh, Sandwich. There's, there's 10 of them. Um, and those character sheets have uh, powers and attributes assigned to them up to level five. But again, if you're playing in a demo environment, then you're able to play with all five powers if you so desire. And um, that's it for creating a character. I mean, it's super simple to start up a character. I can, you could um, sit down with a kid and build a character in as little as 10 minutes or it could take an hour or so. Um, one thing I do recommend is that you encourage your kids to draw the characters. That adds a level of depth to the characters and it adds a connection um, they, you know, between them to the characters that they've created. And it's fun. Uh, when, I was, when I initially created the character sheets, uh, the, the character art was very small and in the corner. And then after playing with kids for a time there, they said, you know, well, my kids, um, they wanted more space on the character sheet to draw their characters. Uh, it got to the point where each time they were playing a game, I would give them a new sheet because they were drawing the scenes that their, their heroes were fighting in. So that's just a fun little activity they could do, especially as they're, as they're like processing the game, they're, you know, it's fun to doodle. So, you know, they could draw their characters, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's it, creating a character. Super easy, super fun. Um, really, you could create any kind of character you want. And um, yeah, uh, thanks. <laughs> Take care.